welcome to my video, Jody Arias, an infected mushroom. This is the narrated version. No longer a media flower or even a theatrical attraction, Jody Arias is quickly becoming an infected mushroom inside the razor-wired perimeters of Arizona's prison. Locked up inside the Estrella jail since 2008, Jody Arias has been identified as a management problem by Sheriff Joe Arpaio and suspended all privileges related to contact with the outside world except for legal purposes. What does this mean to the person soon to be housed in her new home Perryville prison complex? Jody Arias was once a special flower for the media and her maniacal followers. After her hung jury trial, she has been denied the opportunities offered to her once, before she became a poisoned apple. It is obvious, since she is spewing her wrath on jail staff and administration, she is becoming quickly contaminated and reaching for a foothold of insanity and chaos as she is absent of the light and the competition of the public events before her final flourished camera cameo. Quickly becoming a specialty mushroom, no longer fertilized and on sterilized grounds or substrates, the environmental contaminants are soaking and leaking in her mind causing an absence of human interactions and now more closely related to the other fungi, bacteria, and other ecological equilibrium a prison setting brings her new life for the rest of her life depending how the judge will rule in April 2015. Soon to be inside a sterilized medium Perryville prison complex, this setting provides the ideal conditions for contaminants to prosper and grow into something more evil or harmful. Breathing sawdust rather than purified air, Jody Arias shall evolve and involve other fungus living there as well as living off the waste products or on the remains of already cultivated institutionalized criminalized fungus. This medium is actually maximum custody or solitary confinement as it is also known and it offers her no competition with others as she now becomes another problematic mushroom that will cultivate according to culture present inside her cell and surrounding fungus which may influence her even more too misbehave and become a poisoned mushroom instead of the media darling she was when she was sprouting her notoriety and popularity via Facebook, Twitter and other social media. Spawned in a small and crowded cell she will be enclosed and contained like a mushroom inside a grain spawn jar, surviving only on the polluted and poisoned sterilization process that will turn her skin into a different dull gray color which will eventually turn into a brownish like slime characterized by a strong but foul odor. In other words, she will smell like a rotting apple, dirty socks, or burnt bacon. A bacillus in content and material, she will no longer appear a smooth-skinned like human being but rather she will take the shape of excessively wet kennels of grain-like mushroom tops that is reproduced through the infection present and simple cell division called solitary confinement. Her newly uncolonized environment will be bare and no longer enjoy the amenities of her Estrella jail settings and privileges. Her times will be harsh and toxic. She will bear the burden of enduring extreme adverse environmental conditions, especially the Arizona summer heat, which will turn her body into a single hardened spore with bacterial endospores which might adapt and survive such high temperatures for short periods of time but not for any prolonged periods of time. She may learn the most practical method for her to survive is to eliminate the psychological bacterial fungi around her and evolve into a soaking grain to adjust to the room temperature endured. This soaking will take no less than 23 hours a day prior to any sterilization or other damage done by the environment. Turning into an endospore, she may become viable and germinate within the time frame allotted for institutional adjustments and then be susceptible to the standard sterilization process or procedures for killers like her eligible to a lower custody level. However, this form won't take place before she does her time in the darkened cell assigned to her for this interment. Trapped inside this contaminated jar of grain and surrounded by cultures devastating to the human mind and body, she will have to conform to the cruel environment the best she can while resting inside this mason jar-like glass but still steel and concrete bunker she is living in. Regardless how she adapts, her skin will grow brown lesions of a formed mushroom. She will be spotted seeing there sitting for prolonged hours of solitary confinement or near the edge of insanity. In order to survive she must maintain her moisture and body heat. She must endure the heat and dryness while ensuring she gets enough water when offered or applied to shower her once every so often with time-permitted care. The bacterium is spread over time, 
in airborne polluted particles spewing from the heating vents disguised as a swamp cooler that doesn't control anything around her including lowering the humidity and heat. She will be burned to some extent and damaged to a degree that is most psychological in nature and difficult to see with the naked eye. If she stays wet, she will survive for the chlorine has little effect since the bacterial population can reproduce at a rate that neutralizes the effect of the oxidizing agents surrounding her. Survival will depend on her ability to adapt, overcome, and manage her inner stress as well as the punishment for being where she is for such a prolonged period of time. Most of all, she must keep her mind going all the time and never give in to the milieu. How she survives and escapes this misery and deadly madness surrounding her can and will be affected by the bacterial disease caused by her solitary confinement and prison conditions. She needs to focus on the cleansing or sanitation of her mind, body, and spirit as these control mechanisms are the most critical components of control measures and the answer to any personal disasters. She needs to develop an overcasing or protective layer to avoid rapid deterioration or soft rot. She must avoid being eaten by the parasites around her. If she adjusts, her skin can turn from gray to a lighter color almost compared to white. The difference in color is easy to tell for somebody who has been through this process that mushrooms undergo when put inside a jar. She will soon see her cobweb skin return to a smoother but still wrinkled layer of flesh. She will be covered with lasting patches of the evidence for being stuck inside a small jar for the amount of time mandated by the culture. If she is successful with her protective layer, she will be the one who sticks out at the speed of growth and returning back to normal but never the same. Her symptoms will reverse the mushroom process and metamorphic conditions imposed. The skin will heal and the degeneration of mushroom mycelium will develop new layers of flesh that may normally be noticed shortly weeks after her first escape from the jar. Her past could in fact reform and as the compost around her breaks down, she turns back into a human being with detectable but flawed characteristics but nevertheless, a humanoid again. Thank you for watching my video this likeness or analogy is what takes place over a 25 year period if she is released for parole after doing her time.